Okay, you made it to track three. Congratulations. This one is for police, lawyers, consumers, basically anybody, anybody, and just, I'll go, I'm just going to go out there on the limb and talk, and a lot of different people actually can benefit from hearing this one. Now I'm going to touch base on live music or the music scene as a musician. I noticed that these are a lot of common occurring problems in the, um, um, in the local music scene, no matter what community you're in. And as a musician myself, it's a bit frustrating because this, this is one problem I've seen a lot of different times. A lot of times you have guys who are, unfortunately, a lot of musicians nowadays are drug dealers. A lot of musicians nowadays are being looked at by the police. And if you as a nightclub owner or, or a live music venue owner or a bar owner allow a band into your bar, what you don't know is that you could be allowing somebody who's being looked at by the police who's being investigated who they want to bust. So you're leaving yourself wide open to your bar getting raided, you losing your liquor license, and all in all, you having to pay a ridiculous amount of taxes to, your, to the state and getting fined up the wazoo. You're inviting a whole slew of legal issues. So... The one thing that you can do is start running, saying, you know what, before you play here, I want you to give me your names and your date of birth. Why? Because if the cops are looking at you or you have a series of fel more than two felonies or you've had one felony and like six to eight different misdeme drug misdemeanors, I really don't want you in here. Why? Because I like having my business. And unfortunately, I'd rather, you know what, I'd rather give um, musicians who are honest, who are not... And we're not, um, we're very trustworthy people who had enough sense to stay out of trouble and stay out of prison, who obeyed the law, who are more deserving of this opportunity to come here than you. Why should I sit there and allow you? You have numerous arrests on your record. You have numerous different problems. You're, you've been investigated by the police multiple times. So give me a reason why I should let you in here. I'm inviting trouble into my bar by letting you in here. However, cops, what you could, you could do is... Go there, see the people that you know are criminals who are going to their establishment, print out a copy of the of the of a, of the, of a police report on that person, and then get, and just give the, and give the, that owner um, a copy of it. Say here, here's their, here's a copy of their mugshot, here's a list of the offenses they committed, and this is why we don't like them. What that could do is I could sit there and the people who you know are getting over on the system or you know are making life generally miserable because of their, because of their addiction and their criminal behavior um, could be put in their place. They could be stopped right dead at the source. And unfortunately, you ha do have celebrities out there who are, who are convicted felons. However, these are people who are law, honest, law-abiding citizens today. Very famous people who had um, permitted committed offenses way, 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 way back in the day, like decades ago, who were honest people today who, do, who wouldn't deserve to have the whip crack down on them. Unfortunately, this is a problem that's, that's going to reoccur again and again. And, and as time goes on, because of, the, because of the whole culture cleansing we've been going through, it's only a matter of time before the entertainment industry, ha industry has to take a bite of that shit sandwich. The South already had to with the whole Southern flag, with the whole Confederate flag, which was a lot of crap. The Dukes of Hazzard got pulled off the air. That's a prime example right there. But the music industry will end up having to take a bite out of this one. However, to prevent that, what you could do locally is the, the music venue owners, you could start screening your, your acts better. Start doing a thorough, more thorough background checks. If it's one felony and they don't have anything else during then and they've, they've obeyed the law and they haven't done anything stupid since then, leave them alone. But it's a lot different if they have a felony and the eight to nine different misdemeanors or two felonies and they've been to prison multiple times because of drug charges and da 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 and it's a constant thing with them and they're always getting arrested and they seem to be a very, very cocky in their attitude. You know, this is one that where you want to sit there and crack the whip down on them. Or if you're if you're a city council member, you're a mayor, you can sit there and have a local law passed saying that if you're I mean, if you have any drug offenses or if you have a criminal record, you're not allowed to play at live music center venue. Or make them pay for a performer's license. Make them pay 200 bucks a month for a performer's license. And local non-famous musicians, literally when they say starving artists, they're not kidding. 
we're all poor. We don't make a lot of money at all. We are some of us are on the fixed budgets. We're on very low income. If we're lucky, we can get a piece of musical equipment like at once every two years, and that's usually second, third rate crappy stuff. Nine times out of ten, it's you're lucky if you can get one iota of an inch ahead in the uh, ahead in the music world. And unfortunately, when you're a no name, the only way you're going to make it is if you have a band together. And a lot of these guys who do this really con their way into the system. They're manipulative and they lie, and they they have what they they have their like, their little little slice of heaven. However, their little slice of heaven comes at the expense of other people who suffer and who have who pretty much who don't get any fair opportunity. You see, these guys are sitting there, they're getting by, and they're milking it, and they have and they have again these these guys have opportunity that they just shouldn't have. It happens every day, it happens all the time, and unfortunately, there's honest musicians who have had enough sense to stay out of prison, who do obey the law, who are just trying to earn their way um, ahead in the music industry, who aren't getting anything. And they're hungry for their opportunity, they want it, but they're not getting it because you have guys like that over and over again. Also, what it would do, it would sit there and it would, it would, send, it, it would send a message, you know? Obey the law, don't do drugs, stay out of prison, and maybe you can get ahead in the, in the music world. Unfortunately, I mean, the music industry will, it, it can thrive, provide it needs to be cleaned up a lot. And this is one problem. You have guys out there who are, you have guys out there who did their dirt back in the day who are law-abiding citizens now who shouldn't have to suffer because of idiots like this. Unfortunately, because of idiots like that, guys like Tim Allen and Bill Murray would end up having to sit there... Um, and take a big chunk, a big bite of that shit sandwich, and they would end up suffering in the long run. You have guy, you have guys like Jay Z, who's a two-time convicted felon, who used, to, who was a crack dealer, and a cocaine dealer, and he was very much a drug peddler. He strung, he was stringing people out before he was a rapper. That's a, that's a, that's the scary truth about about the music industry. You have guys like that who did that stuff, um, but guys like Bill Murray who committed one drug offense when he was a kid, and Tim Allen, the same thing. These guys are A-list actors and comedians. They are law-abiding citizens today, and they don't deserve any of that. I know one guitar player, very talented guy. He could be the next Santana. In fact, he's better than Carlos Santana in a lot of way he plays. He's got one felony. He's a law-abiding citizen today. Doesn't do anything wrong. He just wants to make it. Because of guys like the repeated drug, offend, drug offenders and guys who are in and out of prison all the time, who are always in trouble and who milk it, the entertainment industry and the government are, the government's going to end up cracking the whip down on the entertainment industry where good guys like that are going to end up suffering busy idiots like him. To prevent that, the only real thing you can do is if you're a cop or a music club venue or even a comedy club owner is to screen these people properly. Say, dude, you have repeated drug offenses. You have you have all these all different things wrong with you. You're constantly doing in and out of trouble all the time. I really don't want you performing in my establishment. Why? Because I don't want to sit there and tell other. And what am I? What am I saying to young kids? Do drugs, go to prison, and then you can make it as a rock star and a comedian. No. That shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that way. Unfortunately, this thing happens a lot. And yeah, I got to touch base on this one because if I don't touch base on it, on a national level, the government as a whole is going to sit there and is going to make everybody suffer. They're going to make it so hard to get into the music industry. And let's face it, one of the ways you can sit there and still make money off the music industry is making it more non-accessible. But to where there's enough fair opportunity for the people who do deserve to go around, what you can do at the very bottom of the, uh, bottom of, of the barrel is weed out those who deserve it and those who don't. And it creates more business for you. It protects your business as a whole. And police, if you put the pressure down on these live on these music venues and bars to stop letting those people in there, it could sit there and motivate them to kind of get their act together. Unfortunately, this happens a lot. There's a lot of bars in and out of even um in that, um, in and out of New Jersey, New York, um, Connecticut. These are all places where these bar owners are friends of these people, and these are repeated drug offenders, and they do this a lot. Um, and on, and they pretty much there's never any consequences with their actions. However, on a local level, if um, if the town that they're that, that establishment is located in and could revoke their liquor license, 
or threaten to revoke their liquor license if they continue to do that, that could be a possible way to sit there to motivate them to stop. Again, on all different levels, there's got to be consequences for these actions. It never really happens. And you have honest, honest people who are not, um, who are trying to make their fair, their fair way into the world, who are suffering at all cost. Now, other people could say, "Well, I'm, I don't like that." Well, you should have stayed out of trouble. You should have stayed out of prison. Somebody who had enough sense to obey the law and not commit these crimes is the one who really deserves this opportunity. You want to sit there and get by and get ahead in life. You have to consider that you know what, on all different levels, your actions are affecting people in every different way. Good men and women should not have to suffer because you want to because you want to sit there and not use your brain and act like an idiot. Honest, hardworking musicians who want their fair share of opportunity shouldn't have to struggle to get by because somebody else doesn't know when to quit. You know, and these are things that people have to consider. And if it's not considered, it's going to get a lot worse.